So let's talk a bit about how to solve square linear systems. Square meaning that the coefficient matrix A is square, that is, it is of size n by n. That also means that we've got the same number of equations as we have for our unknowns. So the number of unknowns is equal to the number of equations. Note that if we expand the system, ax equal b, you get the following, right? So again, a is referred to as the coefficient matrix. Now we're going to define a new matrix called the augmented matrix. That is a matrix where A sits here. We're going to place a vertical line just for aesthetical purposes. And the vector B is here. Augmented because we augment the vector B, the column vector B, and the last column of A. Given that the augmented matrix A and B in its last column will be of size n by n plus 1, right? Since we've got here n plus 1 columns. Now, what we're going to explain is how to solve any square system of linear equations, ax equal b, using the so-called Gaussian elimination process. So as an example, consider the following 3 by 3 system, which of course could be set as ax equal b, where a contains the coefficients and vector b contains the coefficients on the right hand side, 8, 1, 4. Now we can set the augmented matrix by copy pasting the values of A as such, and then the vector B over here in the last column. Keep in mind that the augmented matrix is really just a compact way of writing the system of equations. We now need to define some terms such as valid operations that you're allowed to do on the rows of the augmented matrix and that are used during the Gaussian elimination process. It turns out that given some elementary row operations, the solution of the system does not change, which is good, since we're going to rewrite the system in a way that best suits us, that we find most convenient. You're allowed to interchange two rows, for example. So you're allowed to interchange row i with row j means that if we have row 1 and row 2, you can flip them, and the solution remains intact. You're also allowed to multiply a row by a scalar, so by alpha, let's say. Instead of row i, you can go ahead and assign the value alpha ri. So ri means row i and rj means row j. And one last thing, you're allowed to scale and add two rows. That is, instead of row j, you can put alpha r j plus beta r i. So you can grab two rows, multiply the first by an unzero real number and the second by an unzero real number and add them up and place them wherever you want in one of the two rows of course. So alpha shouldn't be zero and beta should not be zero. One remark to give right here on row operations is the following. We say that A is row equivalent to B if B is obtained from A by a sequence of elementary row operations. So let's say I grab this A and I perform a sequence of those operations. That is, first time I multiply one row by an unscalar alpha, then at step two, I interchange any two rows. Then I scale and add two rows and insert it in one of the two rows, and so on. I keep doing those sequences in random order. Then I obtain another augmented matrix B. Well, A and B are row equivalent. So let me give you an example on row equivalence. Let's say I've got the following system, which in matrix form is as follows and hence the augmented matrix is nothing other than the coefficient matrix as such augmented by the b vector 1, 3, and 2. Now let's denote this matrix by A and we're going to do some elementary row operations, a sequence of row operations, and I'm going to show you that while you perform each and every operation, we're going to see how the system looks like at each step, you will actually see that performing these operations on the matrix is equivalent to performing the same operations directly on the equations in the linear system. So let's do one operation. Let's say instead of row 2, I just put in row 2 minus 2 row 1. So that said, rows 1 and 3 remain the same. 
So I'm going to copy them. We're going to subtract from row 2 to row 1. So in row 2, I start with 2. I'm going to subtract 2 times 1. That is 2 minus 2, that is 0. Next, I'm going to subtract from 1 2 times 2. That is 4. So we get minus 3. Next, I'm going to subtract from 1 2 times 0. That is 0. So it remains 1. And last but not least, I'm going to subtract from 3 2 times 1. So I get 1. The system corresponding to A is actually the system you see here. That is. And the system corresponding to this augmented matrix is. So the first and third equations are the same, whereas the second equation changes. Go ahead and solve by yourself this system, get the solution, and get the solution of this system. You will find that both solutions are the same. Now let's do another operation that, let's say we're going to exchange row 2 with row 3. What do we get? So row 1 remains the same, 1, 2, 0, and 1. Row 2 becomes row 3. So 1 minus 1, 2, and 2, and row 3 is row 2. So 0 minus 3, 1, and 1. What we did is just exchange row 2 with row 3. So the system right here, we get first equation remains the same. The second equation is now the third equation in this system. And the third is the second equation. So of course, if I exchange the places of the second and third equations, the solution will not change, right? And last but not least, let's do one more operation. That is, instead of row 1, I'm going to put 2 row 1. So I'm going to scale or multiply the first equation. That said, rows 2 and 3 remain intact. And row 1 is going to be multiplied by 2. So instead of a 1, I get a 2. Instead of a 2, I get a 4. A 0 remains a 0. And a 1 becomes a 2. The system right here is 2x plus 4y equal to 2. And the second and third equations are the same, right? So let's denote this final matrix by B and the initial matrix by A. So since B is obtained by a sequence of elementary row operations on A, then A is row equivalent to B. Also, obviously, B is also row equivalent to A. So it's not one way, it's a two-way thing. By performing the inverse row operations, that is, instead of multiplying by 2 row 1, you could divide by 2, then re-exchange the second and third rows, then instead of subtracting from row 2, 2 times row 1, you could add 2 times row 1. So instead of subtracting, you add. You will get row A. So again, from starting from B, you can get row A by performing the inverse row operations. Now, it is not difficult to prove that if A and B are row equivalent augmented matrices that are of two systems of linear equations, then the two systems have the same Solution sets, that is, the solution of one system is a solution of the other system. That said, system S1, or let's call it SA, that corresponds to augmented matrix A, and let's call the system corresponding to augmented matrix B by SB. Then the solution set of SA and SB are the same. What does that mean? It means they give us the same solutions, right? So in this lecture, we introduced a methodology or a sequence of operations on how to solve square linear systems. We didn't see fully how to get the solution, but this is one fundamental step in solving any square linear system. That is, given a matrix A, there are three fundamental operations we can perform. You could exchange two rows, multiply a row by a non-zero constant, and multiply two rows by non-zero constants, then add them up, and place the resulting row in one of the two rows. These are termed elementary row operations, and a matrix produced by one or more of these operations is said to be row equivalent to the original matrix. The approach we take to solving linear systems is to attach the right-hand sides as an additional column to form an n by n plus 1 matrix called the augmented matrix. Now, performing elementary row operations with this matrix is equivalent to performing the same operations directly on the system of equations. 
That is, if we transform the augmented matrix A to another augmented matrix B, and then write down their corresponding systems, then guess what? They're going to produce the same solutions. In the next lecture, we're going to learn about the Gaussian elimination. So you get another row equivalent matrix or row equivalent augmented matrix that will turn out to be easier to solve than the original augmented matrix.